short presentation of 15 minutes on the topic which we've given, which is obviously very, very broad. Um, so the aim is to get a lot of discussion, a lot of different ideas around it. After they've given their presentations, we'll open up the floor to questions, and it's, it's open floor. You can ask anything you want. Um, also, if there's anyone that can't see because of the projector, like, feel free to move maybe now. We just have to spread it around because the leaves are very long. So if you can't see, please feel free to move. Um, finally, challenging all the doctors, we've got some comment cards going around about what you think of the event tonight, any subjects you'd like to do in the future. A transcript of the event will be going up on our website, which is umsu.manchester.ac.uk forward slash DOS. We also have a Facebook page, please check us out. And um, we hope to bring you more exciting events next year. So, without further ado, I will introduce uh, Dr. Ballard to you and uh, let him give his presentation. Um, well, firstly, I'm delighted to be here. Uh, delighted also to be talking about a, a topical subject which seems to be coming more topical by day because when I was invited to give this lecture and figured out what I was going to say um, the Pakistani army had not yet started shelling Mingora in Swap uh, so I was listening to the radio as so I was kind of coming in here in the car this evening uh, here there are now a million refugees that have come out of the Swap to the Salat Valley uh, as a result of a confrontation between the uh, the so-called Taliban militants in that area. They are also found run along the length and breadth of the northwest frontier of Pakistan and the Pakistan army. Uh, but this is symptomatic of the much broader tensions within the region, which I think are all too little understood in a European context. So what I'd like to do is simply take you through very briefly some common comments of who, who are the Taliban and what, what are they all about? Uh, yep, okay. Uh, put the microphone up there. Yeah, is, that, is this actually working? Yeah, that's right. Now, unfortunately, I can crack up it on the screen. So, I've got the notes in front of me. Well, firstly, the, the context within which the Taliban are coming for. Above all, they are not coterminous with Al-Qaeda. Maybe there are linkages between them, but they are not the same people. In the Ta Taliban's religious roots lie in the Diabandi tradition of neo-orthodoxy, for some of you who know something about Islam in South Asia. Uh, and in political terms, they're the heirs of the anti-Soviet Soviet Mujahideen who were uh, in turn primarily financed by the USA and the Saudis and with a distribution of funds for a war in Afghanistan against the Soviet administration by the Pakistani ISI, Secret Service of Intelligence. In other words, an arm of the Pakistani army and an attack of Pakistan Secret Service. So when Afghanistan fell into, uh, fell into chaos, yes, we could come on that. Um, so when uh, uh, Afghanistan fell into chaos after the Najibullah regime fell in 1992, it was the ISI, the Pakistani ISI, who provided the mostly Pakistani trained, trained uh, Taliban with the logistical support, the weaponry, the jeeps and all the rest, which enabled them to sort of sweep away the endlessly quarreling with Mujahideen and to take control of Kabul in 1992. And it was roughly that time that um, um, Bin Laden turned up from elsewhere. Uh, anyway, so they took control of Kabul only to be swept out of power again by the American invasion after 9-11 in pursuit of the train of Bin Laden. For a while it seemed that the... Um, for a while it seemed that the Taliban were eclipsed and certainly the American thought they had because they took people back to Taliban. Uh, and they had, uh, in the face of overwhelming American arms and a good deal of hostility towards their rule, uh, the Northern Alliance swept down with the Americans into Kabul. However, there's been a, sub a substantial resurgence in recent years, largely in response to widespread hostility to the American occupation of Afghanistan, and particularly its uh, 
and it, it's bombing and shooting activity, which is, amongst other things, regenerates a powerful sense of Pakhtun and nationalism reaching across the up-up uh, which has been drawn from the middle which has been drawn right through the middle of the Pakhtun territory, you see uh, the Durand line there, going like wiggling right through the middle of it, which was uh, drawn by Sir Mitchell Durand in 1893 in an effort to establish a buffer zone which pre would prevent the Russians from interfering in British India. The Great Game is still being played in this area, and I don't think you can understand what is going on, such as you take that into account, and how it's responding uh, to all that. One of the consequences of all that is uh, of, well, of the Durand drawing the Durand line, they deliberately drew a line right down the middle of the Patan territory. I'm afraid you can't see too clean here on this slide, but the rather greener area <laughs> to, the, to the left of the River Indus is Patan territory. It doesn't go much further north, but it does uh, go further down into the <coughs> southwest and therefore not on this map. So the Patans were deliberately divided um, by the British Raj for political purposes. Um, the line goes right down a very high mountain range. Um, oh, up to 20,000 20, feet where it says you're at and live there. Uh, very high mountains. So the Patans live in extremely mountainous territories. Excellent guerrilla country. And who have centuries of training in arms and guerrilla warfare. Moreover, they have been extremely well armed over the years. Um, firstly, by the Americans to fight the Russians, and now, of course, 